Getting uh, some of our um, older style um, metalworking happening underway. It's argued, argued that what we are doing has been a trade for about 3,000 years, um, and we're, we're, we're bringing ourselves back to our roots. Now that process is called normalising, um, and it's our first stage of heat treatment right now. Technically speaking, our steel came to us annealed, so in a machinable state, and so then we're going to normalise it because we've just heated it up above its critical temperature. We've bashed it with hammers, we've created a crystalline structure that could potentially create cracks in our blade, so we're going to, we're going to refine the steel back to a, a really awesome state, and, and so we're going to take it from like sugar crystal size down to like powdered sugar size. So really fine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to then harden our blade. And so the hardening process is heating it to its critical temperature, 815. And I'm going to quench into oil. I'm going to warm the oil up slightly today because it's a cold day. This is an engineered quench it being Morton's G quench. And so having it at its the optimum temperature, 20, 25 degrees, is, is where it's going to be at. If you were using canola oil, you would heat that up hotter again. It doesn't quite perform as well, but it, it does perform adequately for heat treating 10 series steel. Why oil and not water? Water's way too fast. But so if you put it in water, it'll just crack. Tatana makers use water, but most of their blade is just iron, mm. and only the edges steel and carbon right. steel. Okay. And so that carbon steel edge, um, sometimes cracks when they when they do it. But I have a friend who lives up in Springwood in the mountains. He makes katanas. He uses W2, uh, which is a modern water quench steel. Uh -huh. You would have used it if you ever used it for hand fire. It's a W2. It's still water quenches, but again, like the like the master smiths over in Japan, they lose one in every three. Well, there's a heat treatment, gentlemen, except cool. for the tempering, but we'll do that in the oven. Yeah. How'd you go? Fantastic day. Good. Yeah, good stuff. Well.
Okay, so that's where she's the blonde timber and the horn ups the brown uh, timber. Good choice. So we're not covering up the face. We want to see the face so that I can, when we go in the grinding room, we can yep. grind our tank to suit. Exactly. That's where the big money is. That's why they call IT internal terrorism. <laughs> Everything on this side to where I want the point to go now, if I want the point to go there, I need to remove all of that steel there to get to that point. So I might even feather it in from here all the way back to get to that point. That's okay. We're just going to leave it on the back. But what I need is from about 20 mil past that shoulder, shiny steel to there. We're not worrying about anything for now. So from here to the tip, and from there to about 30 mil off the tip on that side. So we're going to use our push stick. Now our push stick today, not all as long as this, but you hold it between the thumb and forefinger, balance it on the palm of your hand. Now the reason we do that is Everyone tends to just grab the stick and just do whatever they feel like anyway. I will go through the technique. This technique was taught to me by Jackson Rumble, who's the Jody Smith of the American Blade Society. He'll be Australia's next master smith, I believe, as long as he keeps on the trajectory he's going. And so he uses this method. I can appreciate it, because what it's doing is it's getting our focal point about pressure right onto that tip. But we do it like this so that we can have a leverage and be able to apply pressure and so if I balance on the edge of the tool rest, I mean there's bigger tool rests on there, you could be balancing on the tip of the, the stick, but either way, some of those sticks in there are shorter, so I find the longest ones you can. But what it does is then I can replicate that exact same amount by using the leverage of the stick. Because some people want to go and push like that, and then all of a sudden you're on the back of your knuckles, your pressure might be different. You're always going to be left hand, right hand differently. And the other factor is, when I'm standing facing the grinder like this, and I try and do that, it doesn't feel right. And so then you turn your hand over to make it more natural, where the natural position of your hand is. So what I do is I take a step to the side <coughs> and use my stick that way. And then <coughs> all I need to worry about is the amount of pressure and the height of the stick against the edge. So as I'm grinding, my stick is down a certain amount from that edge. Now, if I say 10 mil, you're going to gauge about 10 mil down, and that's where your stick's going to run. And so it's going to run 10 mil all the way along that edge. And so this just sits flat on there. Now, say with your knives, it's got a, a bit of a dip. Again, always fine now, but I'm just demonstrating the fact that it's high. I'll still go and keep that blade level because this section's still touching that. So, may I have your blade, please, sir? So with this, I wouldn't do that. I would just go across, yeah? And so that way you're keeping your geometry correct. And so it's equal pressure at both sides and stick position down that edge. 